While we face both the current climate and biodiversity crisis, we must ensure the energy system we are building is optimized and benefits people and nature. This is Wired for Circularity, sustainable power grids for a brighter future. Currently, our economy is mostly linear. We take resources, build products, consume them, and then throw them away. This is inefficient and degrades our world. It drives climate change, resource scarcity, and damages nature. A circular economy avoids waste and integrates it into value chains while natural systems are regenerated. It seeks to create a closed loop system that prioritizes sustainability, resource efficiency, and minimal environmental impact. For example, the phone we buy at the store is made with different materials. Lithium for the battery, copper for the cables and chips, and aluminium for casing the electronic components. If our phone stops working or a new model comes along, we buy a new one and dispose of the old model. In a circular economy, the phone can be fixed and reintroduced to the market. Its components can be reused for new phones, and the raw materials can be recycled to make entirely new products. So, how does that relate to our future energy system? To meet global energy targets and fight climate change, we must expand our electricity infrastructure. From wind and solar farms to electricity grids that connect renewable energy to our homes, businesses and industries. But building all this infrastructure demands a lot of resources. This is where circularity can help us build our energy system in a resource efficient way, minimizing impacts for people and nature while creating economic and social benefits. To understand how this can be done, let's look at the definition of circular economy. It is based on three key principles, eliminating waste and pollution, circulating products and materials, and regenerating nature. To eliminate waste and pollution, design comes first. Implementing holistic company strategies with a circular and life cycle thinking approach can allow businesses to eliminate them in the first place. For example, when building electricity grids, operators can refuse materials with highest impact, rethink the design of grid components for repairability and reuse, and reduce resource intensity through innovation and optimization. At RTE, we're using life cycle assessment in order to evaluate environmental impacts and in order to make well-informed decision. That means that we are taking LCA results in order to identify the most circular and sustainable solutions and to make an impact in the procurement actions that we are taking. So the main objective is not only to reduce our environmental footprint, to foster and to promote more circular solutions, but also to enhance resilience since we are in a context of geopolitical tensions and we need also to encourage the use of secondary materials. So we're currently doing a lot of experimentation in order to integrate, for example, materials like steel, aluminium or copper in, their, in the grid components and using from the commissioning uh, grid components in order to reduce our environmental impact. And so we need definitely to work together to create this industrial basis to uh, work with recycling of grid components and create a closed loop for grid technologies. We're just beginning our journey. This is something that we cannot do in alone. We need to work in the electricity ecosystem to drive together circular and sustainable solutions the grid is an important part, not only to decarbonize uh, industries in France and in Europe, and we can only succeed together. Through the implementation of circularity strategies, holistic regulation and methodological standards, we can minimize environmental and social impacts, reduce costs and increase companies' competitiveness. Beyond minimizing waste and pollution, used products can also circulate in the economy once again, generating value along the way. For example, components for grids and renewables can be reused, repaired, refurbished and remanufactured. Like the phone, the parts of a wind turbine can be fixed and reintroduced into the economy. Beyond parts and components, raw materials can play a large role in our circular energy system. Extraction and processing of raw materials creates 60% of global climate change impacts, including biodiversity loss, water stress, and greenhouse gas emissions. However, 
there are solutions to minimize these impacts. Circular economy principles can support the transition to a decarbonized energy system in Europe by helping to provide the necessary raw materials in a sustainable way. Recycling raw materials can reduce our dependency on raw material extraction and the associated negative impacts on people and the environment. Recycling raw materials can reduce the need for mining and processing projects and protect the people and the surrounding environment. In addition to reusing raw materials, resource efficiency is a key element in reducing the raw material extraction and also in avoiding supply chain bottlenecks in the scaling up of renewable energy. Efficient use of raw materials makes the energy transition more independent and more sustainable. Circular economy enables access to local resources and can thus supply the German and the European energy transition independently. When building electricity grids, operators can optimize resources to reduce their needs, rethink processes to procure sustainably sourced materials, repurpose resources from construction sites and decommissioned assets, and recycle what is left. Finally, a truly circular economy should seek to regenerate nature and conserve resources, acknowledging the importance of natural systems while helping ecosystems to thrive. As grid operators manage the vegetation beneath the grid, instead of periodically trimming everything down, they can manage vegetation in a more sustainable way, creating green corridors and enabling biodiversity to thrive under the power lines. This is called integrated vegetation management, and it can reduce costs for managing the area below the power line as the corridors require less maintenance overall. IVN can also boost public acceptance of the infrastructure while benefiting local communities, such as farmers. Ocean ecosystems can also benefit from infrastructure that integrates nature-positive approaches. You can, for example, reintroduce oysters. And oysters are good because they filter the water, but they also create reefs. And from the reefs, you start to create ecosystems. You have little crabs, you have little fish, you, you have all sorts of things. And then, of course, other animals go to that area. And that can really create nice ecosystems. By restoring and enhancing nature, a circular approach allows for a healthier environment with reduced emissions in the biosphere. As we seek to eliminate waste and pollution, circulate products and materials, and regenerate nature, we build a more sustainable energy system. This circular approach to energy infrastructure allows for the climate and biodiversity crisis to be tackled together, while also creating benefits for the environment and people. Learn more about how to close the circle. Visit our website, renewables-grid.eu.